Two days ago, 21-year-old American rapper Juice World died at a Chicago airport after a suspected drug overdose, and you might remember him from that song Lucid Dreams that got a lot of airtime, but this is just the most recent case because we've also seen just within the last couple of years, Mac Miller die of a drug overdose at 26, XXX Tentacion get shot and killed at 21, of course, Lil Peep dying of a drug overdose at 21, and it's very sad because this music is the dominating music of our generation, whether or not we like it, and so we should probably talk about its implications on our culture, so stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. This channel might get deleted soon because of YouTube's new terms of service. So go follow me on Twitter. Go to heckoffkami.com so that we can stay in touch if and when that happens so we can plan our next move. Also, remember, the only reason that they'd be able to do that in the first place is because technically this channel wouldn't be considered, quote, commercially viable because they already demonetize all of the videos that we post. So if you like what we do, consider becoming a member over at heckoffcommy.com for just a few dollars a month. The live shows are starting soon. Exclusive content's going up. We're going to have guests. It's going to be very epic. And then the lights stay on over here. And I really appreciate that because this is pretty fun for me. Plus, my birthday's coming up soon. You know, things to consider. But anyways, I know that musicians dying isn't a new phenomenon. I know that older generations or those of us who listen to rock music will think of the 27 Club, people that all died at 27 years old. And even though we really didn't start thinking of it as the 27 Club until Kurt Cobain um, committed suicide in 1994, but you still got names like Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, and then off the top of my head, other musicians that aren't necessarily in that, like uh, John Bonham, greatest rock drummer of all time. Uh, don't yell at me, that's the truth. Uh, Keith Moon, Freddie Mercury, John Lennon, Buddy Holly. Very recently, too, we lost David Bowie and then Chris Cornell, from Soundgarden. He committed suicide in his hotel in my hometown in Detroit. That one was rough. So it's not like all of a sudden our generation is experiencing this unprecedented wave of our artists dying, but one thing that's different, and I think we can all agree on this, is that the music is decidedly different, and so is the culture that surrounds that music. For example, uh, John Bonham died because he drank too much and then he choked on his vomit. Same thing happened to Jimi Hendrix, except that it was from sleeping pills. John Lennon was uh, shot in New York City. So that all happened and it was tragic. But I think the difference is that the type of music that we're seeing now almost mandates a lifestyle that increases your probability of dying in order to establish credibility for yourself. Like, of course, you can find rock music that's centered around drug use and even violence, though it's rare. But with the type of music we have now, almost every song, with very few exceptions, not only mentions, but endorses drug use, violence, and casual sex and the objectification of women. And also important to note is the difference in the drug use that the music is talking about. So like with rock, you had extremely widespread marijuana use. There was also a decent amount of hallucinogens. Um, you had a decent amount of cocaine and even heroin. So definitely lots of hard drug use, but a lot of the music that was written about the drug use wasn't written to glorify it, but rather to lament it or to condemn it. And we saw Guns N' Roses do this. Robert Plant did this with Led Zeppelin. Uh, Mick Jagger did this with the Rolling Stones. John Lennon did this. So the point is that while the drug use was very common, it was definitely not glorified in the way that it is now in music. In fact, I found data that shows that in almost all rap songs, drug use is mentioned and glorified to some degree. And even more interesting is that this is somewhat new because if you look at the 38 most popular rap songs from 1979 to 1984, only four of them, or 11%, mentioned drug use in any capacity. And the context was also much different because they were often acknowledging the hardships brought by things such as the crack epidemic. And so now what we're seeing is drug use being promoted as a symbol of status, wealth, sex appeal, uh, which is basically what modern rap music is. It's effectively an artificial ego booster that allows people to pretend that the repeated messages of, I have more money than you do. I could likely inflict great bodily harm upon or kill you and face little to no consequence. Your woman is much more attracted to me than you. And in fact, she and I have engaged in relations and this should make you upset. Also, I like to use drugs like every rap lyric that we see now could fit into one of those categories. And the drug use that's being promoted now is also much different, not only in how often it's promoted, but also in the way that it's promoted and what's actually being promoted. Like old lyrics would allude to drug use, right? Like um, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, that was about LSD. But I didn't know that when I was a kid listening to it in the CD player of our Durango. Rap lyrics can do this too, but they usually don't. Usually they name the drug or they use nicknames for the drug, for which we are all aware. And they're just not talking about marijuana. They're talking about abusing multiple different prescription drugs simultaneously 
and stuff like Adderall, uh, Percocet, Xanax, Vicodin, also synthetic marijuana strains, codeine, fake prescription drugs laced with fentanyl, or even cocaine and heroin laced with fentanyl, ecstasy, molly, mushrooms, Oxycontin, all sorts of stuff, right? And it's like, the difference is that you didn't used to have to be doing this stuff to be credible within the culture. You could write a song about drug use, good or bad, and no one would call you out if you weren't actually participating in the lifestyle like rappers do now, because not only is there the common practice of that, which comes with being famous, but now you almost have to be doing that if you want to be considered authentic. And if you aren't actually using or selling drugs or affiliated with gangs like you claim, you'll get called out by other rappers. And unfortunately, it's much harder to make a name for yourself if you don't talk about those things because the demand right now is for music that makes people feel tough and untouchable. They want to drive around and listen to someone else talk about how much money they have, how they crush all of their enemies, how women desire them, or if it's Cardi B, how she literally like takes advantage of men by drugging them and robbing them. And they want to you know, bob their head to the beat and pretend that they can relate to what that person is saying when in fact the person you're listening to probably can't even relate to the story that they're telling you. And there's also a big difference between rapping in the first person under your own name and singing a song that you wrote under the name of your band. Like it's heavily implied that all rappers are talking about their own habits and lifestyles where with older music, that's definitely the case sometimes, but it's also just a reflection of the fact of drug use much more often, which like we discussed was a theme of early rap music, but now it's completely changed. And these new rappers are literally profiting from American kids being negatively influenced by the lifestyles that they're promoting in their music. And they're often profiting directly from it as well, because a lot of them are actually involved in the trafficking of these drugs. But at the very least, they are acquiring wealth and status by promoting drug use and degeneracy. And unfortunately, because the culture almost requires that lifestyle, it ends up catching up to a lot of them. Like we just talked about the drug use, but even the violent aspects of the music, like just seems to have recently caught up to X. And basically, I find it very rich that our culture, on the one hand, buys this music, idolizes its creators, celebrates the direction of our culture towards hard and excessive drug use and violence, and then, on the other hand, when those very lifestyles catch up to these artists and cost them their lives as a common byproduct of their involvement with them, we see the same people talking about how sad it is that they died. Oh, it happened too soon. It's such a shame. Which it is, of course. But you have to understand that at the very least, those people are complicit in that happening to them. Those people supported the culture, supported the music, supported the lifestyle, even financed it for these artists. And then they want to act shocked and sad when it ends up costing the artist their life. It's like you only cared about the artist because they were putting out music that enabled your own degenerate or at least aspiring degenerate lifestyle because you want your own pursuit of that to be normalized within the culture so you don't feel as bad for it and you paid them to do that for you. And then when it killed them, you sobbed. If you really cared about them, you would have been outspoken against them engaging in those behaviors and you'd be outspoken to anyone who was influenced by them, but that's not what we're seeing. They ended up getting lung cancer, but you gave them the money to buy the cigarettes. And with this guy Juice World, he was 21 years old. He was traveling on a private plane with a bunch of guns and a bunch of drugs. The pilots tipped off the authorities about the guns since that's a big no-go for air travel, by the way. And so there were cops waiting when they landed. And it's been reported that Juice World took a bunch of the drugs uh, that they had on the plane to try and hide them from the police. And that's what ended ended up killing him. And now we're still waiting for the toxicology reports, but that's looking to be the case. Or Mac Miller, he died after overdosing on cocaine, alcohol, and fentanyl. X was targeted by a group of guys that shot him a bunch of times and stole his 50,000 in cash off him. Lil Peep died from an overdose of fentanyl and Xanax, but he also had marijuana, Ultram, cocaine, and a handful of different opiates in his system. And it's like, these are just the bigger names that have died within the last two years or so. But there are a lot more because this type of music promotes a culture that ruins and costs lives and it'll catch up to you eventually. The toll will be paid and it's very sad and I have a lot of sympathy for these people, but it's also extremely hypocritical to celebrate what the music of these people represents and then also to sob when it catches up to them and kills them. And I don't think it's necessarily the music that's causing the culture because our culture is already stringing itself out on drugs and committing suicide so much that our average life expectancy is actually decreasing, but it's still important to understand the implications of what is arguably the most influential form of our pop culture on our society, more importantly, on our children who look up to these people. And if our culture is going to continue to celebrate and financially reward drug use, then we're going to have to expect and get used to our artists dying. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Very excited for my birthday, the big 2-0. Not as excited for the end of the 2010s, but it is what it is. But yeah, you don't have to get me anything. Could get me a necktie. You may have noticed I only have like nine. You could get a subscription to heckoffcommy.com. It's in your best interest. You could get a Gun Owners of America membership, also in your best interest. You could stop watching porn, also in your best interest. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America. And remember, it's all for the kids. Ka-chow!